Hey everyone, today we're going to look at the Subharmonicon's Rhythm Generators. I'm going to explain these in detail. There's going to be math, there's going to be diagrams, and I'm going to try my best to keep it interesting and make it not feel like a PowerPoint presentation. But I think these concepts are important. Towards the end, I'll touch on how we can use the patch bay with the rhythm generators, as well as an external module that I think pairs really well with the subharmonica. I'm also going to talk about three missed opportunities that I think Moog should have included. By the end, you should have a good understanding of how the rhythm generators work and be able to make killer polyrhythms. Just to clarify something, I'm putting these videos out on an ongoing basis. So if there's a topic or something that you haven't seen a video for, it's likely on the way. I have at least five other videos planned and I keep coming up with more and more ideas for videos I want to do. So stay tuned, there's more topics on the way. Let's get started. The idea behind these generators is inspired by the Rhythmicon, which was a polyrhythm generator made by Leon Theremin in the 30s. A composer by the name of Henry Cowell with some benefactors commissioned Theremin to build it. It produced polyrhythms with subdivisions of up to 16 values. And while it might have been the inspiration beyond the 16 subdivisions, there really aren't that many similarities between the Rhythmicon and the Subharmonicon. The Rhythmicon used scanning discs and was a giant box. The Subharmonicon is, by comparison, really small and is made of pure analog deliciousness. So the Rhythmicon never really took off. But whether or not the Rhythmicon got us here or not, here we are. So about those rhythm generators, there are four of them. They are independent and identical. Each can be assigned to an individual sequence or both sequences. You can have any number of rhythms assigned to the sequences and we'll talk about how that works in a minute. Each generator creates one rhythm, but as they interact, either on the same sequence or on different sequences, you can make interesting polyrhythms. In some ways, you can think about the rhythm generator as a clock divider with adjustable mounts. The knobs can divide the incoming clock by a value of 1 to 16. Fully clockwise is 1, and the output rhythm will match that of the incoming clock. Fully counterclockwise is 16, and the rhythm will trigger once for every 16 times the clock pulses. As an aside, I really wish that these knobs had stepped intervals where you could lock in and actually feel it when you turn the knob. I don't really see any reason why these knobs are like that. I understood it when we were talking about the sequencer, but these knobs I think could have that stepped interval because it's locked in at 16 steps no matter what. I haven't thought of a reason why they would make it a smooth knob. If you can think of one, let me know in the comment section. I think that's missed opportunity number one. This is an illustration of the first eight divisions. The illustration could continue up to 16 subdivisions, but I think this is enough to get the point across. Let's say the clock is coming from the mother and playing an eight step sequence. Notice how a division of one will trigger every pulse of the clock. It's identical. If we look at division two, the rhythm generator would send a pulse for every two steps of the mother. The pattern continues. Things get interesting when you look at how it changes over multiple times through the sequence. Let's take a closer look at how this pattern would play out over multiple times through an eight step sequence and we'll use the division of three as an example. The first time through the sequence of eight, the blue dots represent where the rhythm generator will trigger. The second time through, they'll land in a different place. And the third time, they will land in a different place again Finally, the pattern will resolve with both the rhythm and the sequence beginning again on the first step after three times through the sequence. That is, unless something plugs into the reset and changes everything. So that's the idea behind polyrhythm. Eventually, even if the beats are subdivided in peculiar ways, they will resolve at some point. No matter what the subdivision is or how many different subdivisions you have, eventually it's going to come together, no matter what. Math alert, a simple way to figure out when a polyrhythm will complete and line up again is to find the least common multiple between the integer used to subdivide the clock and the number of steps in the sequence, as long as the sequence is playing at the same rate as the clock. In our example, we're using an integer of three to divide the clock. If we have an eight step sequence coming through the mother, we will need to find the least common multiple of three and eight, which is 24. That means that after 24 steps from the mother, or three times the sequence, the polyrhythm will resolve. 
The same formula is true when using two different rhythms. You just need to find the least common multiple of three numbers, the two divisors of the rhythm, and then the number of steps in the sequence. This could mean that polyrhythms take an extremely long time to resolve. For instance, if you have a 16-step sequence coming from the mother and a polyrhythm with subdivisions of 3 and 7, that would mean you'd have to find the least common multiple of 3, 7, and 16. That's 336 steps. That would mean that the sequence from the mother would have to play through 21 times before everything resolved and landed on 1 again. There are online calculators for these things if you have trouble figuring them out. And it gets even more complicated when you start layering multiple rhythms and using different logic functions to calculate them. Okay, I'm not going to get that detailed, but the point is, is that it's eventually going to resolve. And that if you really wanted to do the math, you could figure out when it's going to resolve. If you assign two rhythms to one sequencer, some internal logic processing is in modular, there are a handful of logic functions that are frequently used, and many modular systems have dedicated logic modules that are used in tandem with clock dividers and other modules to create intricate rhythms and signals. The subharmonicon gives us a taste of that by giving access to two functions, OR and XOR. The default is OR. XOR is accessible through MIDI by using CC113. You have to program in a value higher than 64. So just to reiterate, if you're not changing settings through MIDI, then you are using the OR function as a default. And there's no way to change this value without using MIDI, which I think is missed opportunity number two. I really wish Moog had included a button or a hidden feature where you combination of buttons so that you could change this without having to use some type of MIDI interface. In fact, I think it's the only MIDI function that you can only access through MIDI. Every single other one you can control on the user interface as is. Let's take a look at the difference between OR and XOR. To analyze the difference between these two, let's keep it super basic. We'll take a subdivision of one and two. One obviously mirrors the clock. OR logic functions are basically a sum of the two signals. If one OR both of the rhythms fire a signal, the sequencer will advance. This means that if you combine a division of one and two, the new rhythm will sound exactly like rhythm one because one of them is firing every single time. This is the default on the subharmonicon. With XOR logic, the rhythm will only trigger the sequencer to move if one of the signals is firing, one or the other, but not both like before. So with the same example, we'd have a generator fire like this. The generator would not fire on the downbeats because both generators are firing. Let's take a look at a more complex situation. A subdivision of 2 and 3 with a sequence from the mother of 8. Using our least common multiple equation discussed earlier, we're going to look at 24 steps, or 3 passes of the sequence, to see the entire polyrhythm play out. Let's start with OR, which is the default mode. The sequencer will move every time the rhythm of two, three, or both fire. So our rhythm will look like this for the first pass. A combination of both. This is our second pass, and this is our third pass. Now let's look at what would happen if we had it set to X or. Remember, if both rhythms are firing, the sequencer will not advance. This is what it looks like. Notice how there are groupings of three triggers that move throughout the sequence. Let's hear it.
possibilities are pretty wild. One viewer on one of my previous videos noted in the comments section that he programs this value to a button on his BeatStep Pro. That way he can turn it on and off as the sequence is playing without disrupting the polyrhythm. I think that's a brilliant way to use this function. And if you have a BeatStep Pro or another MIDI controller, I highly suggest that you give it a shot. One feature that I really wish Moog had included is a rhythm out patch from one of the generators. That way you could use the clock divider that's built into the subharmonicon with other modules or instruments. At the very least, it would be really nice to have one that you could plug into the reset button. So that way you could say set the division at 16 steps and it would reset the entire polyrhythm every time the mother went through a 16 step sequence. That's missed opportunity number three. Remember our example of a polyrhythm with a subdivision of three and seven with a 16 step sequence? We said that it would take 336 steps or 21 times through the sequence to resolve. But what if we wanted the rhythm to be the same over each time through the sequence? If we had a rhythm generator out, we could set the rhythm to 16 and patch it to the reset button. So since we can't do it through the patches that are available through the patch bay, you could use an external clock divider to do the trick. Clock dividers are great utilities that I think will give you a lot of use if you're looking to expand into your rack. It's one of those modules that you don't really think you need until you get one and you realize how awesome it is. So there are some pretty fancy ones out there like Pam's Workout, which is all the rage these days, and I'm sure it's a great module. You could just get a nice simple one like this Dofer. It's dirt cheap and it does the trick. Personally, I really like Eurorec modules that don't have menus and are simple. And Dofer fits the bill for me. And recently I've been getting a lot of Dofer utilities. Let's take a look at a clock divider to reset the sub. I'm going to patch the trigger into my clock divider and take a 1 16th out subdivision and put it into the reset. This way it will reset whenever it hits the 16th step. That is how the rhythm generators work. I hope you go out and make some awesome polyrhythms and have a lot of fun with all this information. If you decide to go out and buy a clock divider, consider visiting one of my affiliate links down below. It's a great way to support my channel at no additional cost to you. You can click on those and shop around and buy some other product and I still get a little bit of a commission. I've got a Patreon page set up that I'm adding to constantly. It's brand new as of January 2023. There's a DFAM patch book, and I'm going to be putting some more patches from the Sound Studio as a token of my gratitude for you supporting the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section. In the next video, I'm going to go back to the envelopes because there's some behavior that makes them a little bit unique compared to some other envelopes on other sites. And I want to just do a quick video to explore that. All right, catch you next time.